You're listening to Corinne Batar on The Beat London 103.6 FM. The main man is in the building. Kabaka Pyramid, how are you, sir? How are you going? I'm there giving thanks, you know. I look all under the weather, but we're there giving thanks, you know, life is good. I'm not surprised you're under the weather because you've just told me <laughs> you've just completed 29 shows, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Definitely in six weeks, yeah. 29 is, oh no, you had to add that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of the most crammed scheduled tours I've done so far. So I'm trying yeah. to do the maths there. So seven days, so 42 days roughly, seven times six, yeah. 29. Wow. Yeah, man, we had we had a stretch where we did 10 shows in 11 days. That's not a joke. No, nah, it's not, it's not. Okay, so I, I, I forgive you for feeling under the weather. <laughs> no, nah, man, to, it's all good. To be honest, faced with this miserable weather sometimes, yeah. it can get a bit much, but you are live and direct in Halsden which I don't know if you've been told yeah. it's kind of the unofficial reggae capital in the UK word word I, I, I believe I've been told that before you know? unofficial yeah. reggae capital no one stamped it on us but Shit. we kind of are, what would it take to convince you to move your studio set up here and start <laughs> training the next gen in Halsden is this is this something we can do I mean you know I love to have setups all over everywhere I go so yeah why not let's what, do it what does your studio setup look like back home um, I have a room in, in my apartment where I set up like a nice studio desk and I have my, you know, M149 Neumann mic, I have my Neve 1073 going through my um, LA 2A compressor, my nice little, you know, Mac Mini set up with my monitor and everything, yeah, you know, Apollo, you know, so I have a nice little set up mostly for vocals and production, Yeah. you know, to try and treat the walls and thing and get the room sounding nice. Mm, yeah, but, you listen, know. Listen, man, I, I knew you, I'm sick. It sounds like you double as an interior designer. I feel like I feel, you're shouting out the equipment there like they're your like family. Like a gearhead, a gearhead, you know what I mean? And I can't lie to you, the, the equipment kind of becomes your family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It does. I mean, if you spend money on your family, you spend money on equipment. I can't tell you that. <laughs> I've, sure. I've got a quote from you here, okay? Mm. Your acceptance speech at yeah. the Grammys. Word. Thank you to everybody supporting positive conscious music these are your words yeah. from your speech as you accepted your Grammy for best reggae album by the way which give is that, sensational that, in February and I think I've been listening to you for a while but yeah. it always seems like your end goal is for your message to be timeless for your music yeah. to carry and for you not to kind of put short termist lyrics that's why the pyramid that's why the name is a pyramid you know Absolutely. what I mean to last long stand the test of time that's what the music is about when we think about the legends who inspire me like the Peter Tashes of this world and you know what I mean Bob Marley is like their music can be played at any point you know and it still resonates you know and as long as there's injustice in the world as long as there's inequality there will be a Kabaka pyramid and ones like myself to sing music and try and shift the vibration you know do you know what I love to hear that and I want to ask you that exact question because in 50 years time yeah what do you predict people will say Kabaka pyramid stood for what did you stand for they're looking back in 50 years time the same way yeah. we look at Bob and Peter Tosh and stuff like that yeah. what will they say about you the higher consciousness of humanity you know uplifting the consciousness of humanity I think that's that's ultimately what we're all here to do that's the purpose of why we incarnate in these bodies is to learn and grow and evolve towards higher beings yeah. and I want my music to support that and do you for you personally so obviously the lyrics are obvious in the music that you kind of transfer that feeling yeah. through the lyrics do you ever almost beat select with the idea that you're trying to carry it through the music as well and the beat patterns as well yeah 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 for sure because i like to write two beats some people write and then create the beat mm. you know i like to i like to already know what's the vibe of the beat what, what how can i flow around it and then kind of tailor the music off of that so i already know if that beat is giving me the kind of vibes where i need to get my message across yeah. and then i'll go from there because i'm not sure who said the quote and i think it might have been kanye and he yeah. said 808s are the lowest form of musical wit or something <laughs> like that and he said we're eventually i have this theory that we're eventually just going to get to a point in music yeah. where you'll be in a club and they're just playing 1808 and, eight 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 and then everyone's just doing their yeah. thing to that 1808 would you agree that different frequencies and sonics like that yeah. feed the body differently yeah definitely I feel there's like probably a root chakra thing going on with 808s you know where people feel it down in that in that area and it kind of goes along with like sexual energy and all of those type of things too so you find like you know 
in strip clubs, the 808s playing yeah. and them kind of vibes. So them kind of frequencies goes with that energy. So, you know, reggae music has always been a higher frequency thing. You know, so I think although we still heavy bass line and, you know, bass line is a lower frequency, but still just the progressions and the chords and the, the, temp, the tempo. Yeah. Tempo has a lot to do with it too and the groove and everything. So there's a natural mystic about reggae music. I think it, 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 it uplifts humanity from a conscious level. Absolutely, and I think you keep you, you keep using the phrase higher frequency. And I, I completely agree with you, even, even though I'll be honest with you, I'm going to confess yeah. here. I enjoy an 808 from time to time. No, for I sure. Do. For I don't sure. want to lie here on the for mic. Sure. I, even Grateful had 808s in it, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, yeah. We, we all do, but I hear you that you're kind of trying to achieve something a bit. Deep. Yeah, it's more. And then there's an organic nature to music too. Like when you're playing actual live instruments on the tracks, it gives this organic kind of energy. So a lot of the music on my album was played by organic instruments too. So big up to Damian Mali who produced the whole album. You know what I mean? Like the, watching him work has been a learning experience for me too. You know? You've always, I think, and the thing is, you're surrounded by legends. You yourself are a legend. Let me give you that compliment times, as well. Times. And it must have been amazing working with him. Just yeah, having that definitely. kind of musical mind, looking over it and just yeah, tending to it. Yeah, the guidance that you get from somebody with his experience, knowing that he's done everything that you can do in reggae music, you know, so to speak, and exactly where I want to be in my career is where he's at. You know what I mean? So just watching him learn humbly, you know what I mean? Paying attention to all the details. You know, he's on the MPC program in drums and directing the musicians who's playing. Julian Marley will come in and play bass line and play keys. He's super talented too, you know what I mean? And we sent one of the songs to Stephen Marley and he did some co-production and, and addiction, you know, and all of that. So just having talented ones like that around is a different vibe, different level. I need to get new friends. <laughs> you know, he's... he's crazy Kabaka's just literally be like yeah yeah I had Steven on line one Damien was on two I had him on hold yeah. and stuff I said no, stuff we to even my did, we even did a song where we, we FaceTimed in with Janine and she was in Tanzania no way and she was like humming melodies to guitarists and stuff like that and that's how we came up with Safe Right Here so you know it's just a collective effort and I think what I'm just seeing it in your face as well it just I can only imagine the joy you're yeah, feeling when yeah. you're working on this stuff yes it's lovely hearing other people vibing yeah. to your track I think that I can imagine there's no better feeling no. than even at the Jazz Cafe on Monday you're looking at for people's sure, eyes for sure for and sure. they're singing my lyrics back but no, you it's the most it. special feeling to me is the creative process mm. yeah for sure that's what we love the most like just coming up with something seemingly from nothing is just the greatest feeling and watching everything come together you know it's amazing hey, it's making me happy listen to it my friend we're gonna play a track of yours which isn't from The Calling okay okay I've picked another one of my favourites Nice Up The Dance ah uh, yeah man okay so this one we're gonna play it and we'll be back don't go anywhere beat London listeners because Let's we've got it. Kabaka Pyramid right here for some more chat yeah, man, son, man, this is Dexter up saying, listening to the beat. You listening drive time, you know? And you know, it's so a Kareem, you know? Turn up the radio, you know? Turn up the radio, you know? Coach you load from in the Netherlands. Sure. We are back with the man himself, Kabaka Pyramid. How are you, sir? They are give thanks. Yes. I love that. Every time we're back on the mic, we're giving thanks. Yeah, so that's to, a, that's to. how it should be. Always. And we have mentioned the album so far, The Calling. Okay? Yes, sir. The album's sensational. And Thank I'm you. sure you've been asked a million questions about it. You've done thousands of interviews, but I need to hear the story behind one of my favourite tracks, yeah. Mystic Man, to be able to get the late, great Peter Tosh as an official feature, <laughs> feature. on the album. What a proud moment for you. Yeah, no, but definitely. How did this come about? Tell me the full story. I mean, it really starts from, like, growing up. I'm a father driving to the country in Jamaica, you know, listening to Bob Marley and Peter Tosh music as a little kid. That's where the interest always lies and started from so I've always been a fan of Peter Tosh you know as soon as I start to try Rastafari I, you know the more I think about myself the more I feel like I align with Peter Tosh kind of personality and mentality towards music standing up for what he's about and you know when Damien asks what are some of your favourite songs or artists that, that we could sample on the project mm. you know I mentioned Peter Tosh and Mystic Man is my favourite song of his catalogue yeah. you know he's just talking about things that he doesn't do and 
you know he doesn't drink soda and he doesn't eat hamburgers and you know things like that me as a vegan as a rasta man i relate to that song you know what i mean so you know that was the whole idea damien chopped up the beat kind of gave it a hip-hop vibe and i came to studio one day and the beat was already done and i was like no nah, this is crazy and you know it was just a lyrical exercise for me a you lyrical know? this define lyrical exercise i mean you i know, need more from, flavor on that no from i hear the type of beat and the, and the vibe i just knew i had to chop some lyrics you know so it was always about that and i always kept the mystic man theme right through yeah. and kind of related back to me and how i am so i'm talking about you know honoring my ancestors healing his majesty you know investing in crypto and all kind of things you know what i mean it's like just different ways of how i am who i am you know what i mean i am um, and the thing is yeah you're talking you you gave it its rightful kind of respect and I, yeah. just the flow the way you're riding on it is just very it's bouncy, like, it's bouncy like a uk you know? hip-hop kind of flow to it i was gonna <laughs> say i was gonna say it's, it's very bouncy yeah and even the, thing, the part where i said king summer bomb in an english fam you know what i mean it's like <laughs> yeah my people yeah. know it's, it's still a yard thing you know what i mean all right listen hey big up yourselves in the uk you're listening to that we're getting uh, some love we're getting some love that is it for i sure. can't lie it was absolutely sensational and i'm assuming the the tosh family were extremely proud yeah yeah definitely what was, what was know, the feedback you received no from? for sure they loved the song from the first heard it and definitely wanted to be a part of it they were good with it. actually we could have sampled it and not like try and gone after peter tosh name as the feature but yeah. they were very receptive to even having him as a feature so if you go and go on spotify or whatever and search peter tosh you're gonna see it mystic man you know what i mean so that's a good thing for us and more exposure you know and things like that it's an honor for me to do a song with a legend like that and did you like what was the reason you pushed to have it as like an official feature why did you want that i mean just the just the, the honor of knowing i have a song with peter tosh like on that level you know what i mean even if it's posthumously it's not like you know i went to him and like yo you know I wanted <laughs> obviously we couldn't do that but still you know knowing the family is supporting what i'm doing musically it's a great thing for me it's amazing man and i just think i think people will obviously associate you with reggae because of your success in the genre but yeah. you grew up on a steady diet of hip hop as well yeah yeah definitely. and i've seen so many interviews of in, in the past that you've said yeah. reggae hip hop now i'm sure you get influences from all over the musical genres yeah like, true that doesn't stop but in terms of hip hop i've always wanted to ask you who, yeah. are, who are the guys who kind of who put you on this path i'm yeah. assuming a lot of us hip hop yeah yeah is there anybody also in the uk that you have looked at or look at well akala is a good friend of mine i've done a song with him you know what he's I mean? a sensational human being yeah of course of course definitely big inspiration for me mm. um obviously you know familiar with the stanzas and the gigs of this world yeah, the yeah. canos you know what i mean so yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of rappers out there even little sims is doing you know good work right now sensational and, yeah for sure so yeah but i mean i grew up on like wu-tang you know nas you know biggie big pun cannabis most deaf yeah. talib quali you know black thought roots them kind of vibe i grew up on you know i'm most, hip-hop wise most deaf and talib quali are like touring in the uk this summer oh, crazy. i think they're hitting up the festival circuit nice. I, I don't think i can miss it yeah black star you know powerful, crazy powerful, <laughs> definitely do you was when you first started rapping let's say yeah was there a certain flow that you were trying to replicate or it's just yeah it was that is that east coast that northeast yeah. you know what i mean i hit you with the quickness so tell him natural is the mystic my spit statistics specific with lyrical fitness we could, you know what i mean it's like them kind of oh, vibe no, you're gonna you're gonna have to make me do one of these <laughs> I don't, I don't think we can really run without the sound effects there. Um, that's it. You got it exactly on point in it. And do you think that kind of helped you when you were moving over to the reggae pockets? Yeah. Having that kind of technical it knowledge was, of it. It was, good. it was a good school for me because I couldn't sing when I started. And yeah. f- to be a reggae artist, you have to have some singing ability. You have to stay on your key, stay p- hold a note. You yeah. know what I mean? And early out, I couldn't do that to save my life. So rapping was a good way for me to sharpen my tools of, you know, writing lyrics, coming up with lyrics sticking to a topic songwriting you know what I mean and then now when my voice developed more now I was ready to step out as a reggae artist but still using those pockets and those kind of lyrical formats from hip hop and you the thing is you show both if anyone's listened to you for a long time even on the yeah, calling you show sure. that you can you can do the rap side you can do yeah. the flow inside Contraband part 2 is you know straight rapping you know what I mean I in terms of flow on a reggae track mm. you see how you have to hold a note yeah now you're a master of reggae so correct me if I'm wrong can you get away with just having an unbelievably 
melodic flow, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, definitely. Instead that's of like, let's say you're not a note hitter, you don't have yeah. to be. A no, 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 for right? sure. But you still, if if you know anything about recording, you yeah. still even to be melodic. Just being melodic, you have to stay within the key of the rhythm. Of course. If you if you go outside of that, it's not gonna sound good. You know, so there has to be some level of vocal control there. Yeah. You know, for sure. So what you were saying earlier when you were saying I wasn't a good singer to start with, you were still in the range. I, no, I had no vocal control <laughs> to start. I, Why? If I if you if I play back my early reggae songs, you laugh. Okay, you know this, what I mean. Sounds like something we're doing not fair. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like this. <laughs> no, it took a while. Like most most reggae artists start either, you know, they come up singing reggae or they come up in the church or you know they go through some kind yeah, of yeah. vocal training or they born with immense vocal talent. You know that wasn't me. You know I didn't come from like a musical family or anything like that. You, you worked. Know, you worked. Worked at it. Worked at it. it. Yeah, for sure. We might have to get in towards the end of the show. We're gonna have to get into some of the techniques, uh, which which mean, got you there. Because actually, I'm really intrigued to hear this. Yeah, no, for anybody can develop their voice. It's just everybody starts at different places, you know. You're gonna gas me. You're gonna get. <laughs> you're gonna gas me. And the thing is, yeah, I'm gonna go home, and my mum is gonna be like, "What are you doing, bro? Go, you've got things to do." I just hear me like, "What are you doing, Kareem? No, you don't sound too bad. You don't sound too bad. Yeah, you have some potential." Challenge. Some potential. I like that. That's yeah, what I like to hear. Listen, we've got a few adverts coming up and then we are back with Kabaka because he's going to be playing three tracks from the call-in and telling us a little bit about each one. Don't go anywhere. Ready. You, sir, start stretching. Get All ready. Right. Good. It's, it's about to go off. You're listening to the Beat <laughs> London's Drive Time Show. It's your boy, Karim Batar. Yo, yo, this is Love at First Vibe and you're locked into the Bitar Sweet Show with my boy, Karim Batar. Big dripper, magnum sipper, track spinner. Let's get it. We are back with the man himself, Kabaka, and it's time for the triple threat. If you don't know how the let's triple threat, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. If you don't know how the triple threat goes, we play three tracks from our fabulous guests, and they explain to us in one minute about each track. Now I've wasted your time; you got forty-five <laughs> seconds. But it is Mystic Man yeah. featuring Peter Tosh, so he's spoken about it a bit. But some final yeah. words on it. Yeah, man. So you don't know, Mystic Man is really just talking about me as a person and different ways how I express myself and who I am. It's a, a hip hop vibe with a reggae you know reggae element you know just it's an honor to do a song with peter tash and to be able to sample my favorite record from his catalog you know go and listen to the original version of Bistic man as well you know it's a great record a great song big up the entire you know tash estate and the whole family you know what i mean and yeah it's just an honor to do this music man trust me love that and listen we've given you guys some homework now if you're really a real beat yeah. london listener you will know the original mystic man but if you there haven't you listened go. to it before do the homework yeah, after you hear this one this is Kabaka Pyramid Peter Tosh Mystic Man oh. now I know after listening to that you're going to be doing your homework the sensational Kabaka Pyramid Peter Tosh there with Mystic Man how you feeling my brother great 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 give thanks for life give th- I was waiting for that <laughs> I was wa- I was waiting for that if you didn't give thanks that time I was, g- was going to give thanks myself but it's, it's always, always always come on I love to hear that the next track sir is grateful yeah grateful you know there's so many reasons to be grateful you know big up Jamiro Morgan on this track big up Damian Marley on the sick production you know we sample like a soul record on this one um, and kind of just switch the vibe on the verse and an interesting story about this the, the original version of this had like a very long I think maybe 64 bar verse yeah. so I kind of wrote wrote it as one verse and then we later cut it into two parts and made the two verses 64 you know yeah so that's why the second verse kind of starts so aggressively because it was kind of meant to be one long thing that just escalates you know what I mean but you know it's just it's just another song where I kind of went off lyrically because of the beat change with the with, you know when it changed from the happy vibe of the yeah. chorus into the verse I felt like yeah I had to go lyrics again and you know what I mean just talking about different aspects of my journey and why I'm grateful to be doing what I'm doing you know that's what, I, mean? what I love and the sample was expertly selected crazy absolutely yeah. but what was the exact sample can you remember uh, I'd have to go and check I'd have we'll to go, go and check me, me and you will go crate digging later yeah, crate we'll digging. find it out but this is the second track from the triple threat Let's this one it. give thanks grateful. be grateful the That's message is there let's go if you are having a bad day in this here capital city of London please know that you have to be grateful at the end of it alright we gotta give 
Thanks, as we're saying. What? Actually, want to hear it from the man himself. I always give thanks. Always give thanks. There you go. That is the one. That's it. And that was Mr. Kabaka, who is here with me. And I'm very grateful that he's here with me. And I hope you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, man. Definitely. Good, good, good advice, advice, man. We love the energy in there. Always a good energy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are trying. We are trying. It's, it's not, I would like to say it's effortless, but it's not. I, I try to give good energy. Word, you know word, what I'm saying? Word. This next track, The Calling was on our brand new playlist here at The Beat London and it was in a regular rotation big up, for big a up. very long time. Tell us a bit about it, my friend. Yeah, so this is the title track of the album. You know, I feel like everybody's called to do something. Everybody's born with a higher purpose. You know what I mean? And I feel the music and the message in the music is my calling. And, you know, just a sick track, sick beat, crazy production by Damon again. We got Steve O'Malley on the chorus, you know, just an honor to do a song with him. You know, Proto and Jesse Ryle was in studio when Steve was recording and I was like, yo, man, them write some verse, no, man, and you know what I mean? That was just a vibe, and you know, we just got everybody on the track. We got to create it together in studio. So it's just a great energy. The video is all doing really well. Mm, you know what I mean? Very good video, buddy. Yeah, for sure, man. Give thanks. Big up Samo, and the, who Samo was the creative director on the whole project, so he shot that video too. So, you know what I mean? This is the calling. The, co- the, the call- calling. The, co- the calling. <laughs> London's calling. Got, got, got a setting, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is the track right now. <laughs> Only dealing in inspirational here today. I listen, I like to think that I inspire you from 4 till 7 p.m. every Monday to Thursday, but today is extra special and extra inspirational. We're giving you gratitude. We're giving you inspiration for you to find your calling. Kabaka has told us that music is his calling and being able to translate that higher message to people. Definitely. What is your calling listening to this music? And you can even hear the evidence of that higher frequency every time you listen to my brother here, who is still in the studio. And we have got 14 just 13 and a half minutes left <laughs> how you feeling bro yeah man as you know giving thanks give it t- as listen, you know he got they listen he got there first <laughs> i like it and i hear you talk about such wisdom in your music and you yeah. seem very learned about human history and stuff like that a little bit not as much as a color but you know a little bit that's cool but hey <laughs> hey it doesn't mean that it's not continuing no of course doesn't I'm, mean I'm that just joking but yeah for sure i like to study i like <laughs> to read i like for you know have information about the stuff I'm interested in, you know? But what I want to ask you is a very simple thing. Mm. And it might seem almost philosophical, but I want you to give a philosophical response. Yeah. What has, you've learned all these things. What has music taught you? Well, music is what kind of brought me on my spiritual path of Rastafari. You know, I have to big up Sizzla Kalonji because it's his music that, you know, really was the turning point for me spiritually. Yeah. You know, and I started to learn about myself as an African, you know, and my roots in Africa as a Jamaican and all of that. So, yeah, it's really music did that for me. And I think music is so powerful that it can change people's lives. Mm. Like I stopped eating meat like within weeks of, of really going in on Sizzla's music. That's you crazy. know, and I hope my whole lifestyle changed. You know, I started to twist up my hair and I've had luck since. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's just, it's such a powerful thing. And that's why music was always something that I didn't take lightly. And I've always felt responsible to put certain things in the music and not be irresponsible with what I'm saying in my music because I know the impact it can have on people's lives. If it can do something so positive, it can do something so negative as well. You know what I mean? So that has always been the mindset. I love that. And you're you're taking your own personal experience and realizing that, listen, someone could be listening to me right now and I want to impart that sort of wisdom. Exactly, exactly. When did did you kind of go on this route? You're saying you're listening to Sizzla. I was like 17, like 2002. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's kind of when everything changed for me and and my whole journey to find myself began. And I want to ask traveling to Africa to explore more of this nature within you yeah <clears throat> what kind of plans have you got what have you already done can you tell me a bit about your travels I haven't been and been to education? Africa as yet um, not yet it's something I'm almost ashamed of <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean but you know t- plans just have always fallen through you know what I mean musical plans to go there but this year we're talking to some people in Gambia right now yeah. and um I'll be off to Reunion Island which is off the coast of Africa you know and, and we're hoping to go South Africa 
um, hoping to go to Ethiopia really soon. So we'll have some people talking to and hopefully we can confirm some of these things and get there this year. Ethiopia must be very special to you because of your background, right? Definitely, definitely, for sure. As a Rasta man, you know, we look to Ethiopia. Even on the song Red, Gold and Green, we explain yeah. that these colours are from the Ethiopian flag of His Imperial Majesty, you know, the only unconquered nation in African history. Yeah. You know what I mean? The first, the first Bible ever written was in Ethiopia. The oldest Bible you could find is in Ethiopia. You That's know what I mean? Mad. Yeah, even the first, Lucy, where they talk about the first fossils or bones of a human being, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. You know what I mean? So it's a very spiritual and powerful place and significant for us, you know? So then let me, uh, I want to judge you yeah. and say you should be out there. What's going yeah, on? I mean, What's sure, going it's, on? What, it's, what are you doing in Bristol? It's like some waste man thing. Oh, I don't reach over the side. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> Listen, hey, I'm going to come link you guys in Addis Ababa. We'll see. We'll yeah, go. Man, we'll, yeah, we'll man. Go I want to touch a Uganda too because that's where the name Kabaka came from too. So yeah. definitely want to see Uganda. You know, Ghana, big up Stone Boy over there. You come know, on. Who I've done a couple songs with. You know, you know the Gambian massive love the music. Zimbabwe, you know, all over Africa they've been calling for us. So. Big shout out as well to our Ugandan breakfast presenter who's listening right now. Straight She's up. in the Beat London HQ, Miss Claudia Namukasa. Big up yourself. Yeah, big up, Claudia. Listening in. We'll have a little conversation with her about maybe some sort of Ugandan tourism later. Yeah, why not? I think she'll be shocked to hear that you haven't been already. No, I haven't been, yeah. Listen, can, yeah, yeah. again, can I tag along to... Can we do a little, like, East Coast tour? Yeah, man, really, I'm, man. I'm not talking, like, New York and Miami yeah, and that. Coast, I'm talking, Africa. yeah, East Coast, yeah, Africa. Kenya. Big up to all fans in Kenya, you know, whole heap of support we get from over there, too, for sure. Uh, and on a light-hearted note, in terms of travel, mm. like just somewhere in the world, wherever you had the most fun, like somewhere just a country you didn't expect to and you just really loved maybe the architecture. Ah, uh, a good question. You love you love the lifestyle, you love something. It is a good question. I'm I quite mean, good. I mean, I always have a lot of fun when I'm in London. It's a special place to, to come, you know what I mean? But um, Trinidad is special. Trinidad, Trinidad is, is Trinidad is great. special. I'm going next year again. Well... <laughs> I don't know if you're a married man, but... I wouldn't be so stupid. <laughs> no, as in, not Just before no Trinidad say, anyway. The, wow, the women over there, man, it's, it's a different level of beauty, you know. And I hear same similar things about Ethiopia, so I'm looking forward to going to Ethiopia for that reason. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, definitely Trinidad is a different level, you know The thing is, obviously, we hold Notting Hill Carnival very close to our hearts here yeah. But when you go out, I went no, out to No, Notting Trin Hill Carnival, oh my God Enjoyed it What? <laughs> yeah, man, the first time I went was We were shooting a video, a song I did with Akala Yeah and no, that was crazy. That was crazy. So many people, so many beautiful women. It was amazing. It was amazing. Trust like, me. I'm from West London. It's yeah. the best thing about West London, in my opinion. It's but straight. I have to betray West London for 10 seconds here. Yeah. Because, and this is unusual. I don't normally turn my back on West London. <laughs> but I will say that Trinidad Carnival changed my life. Yeah. Like, it was <laughs> like you go to that in 2020 and yeah. you look around and you experience what's going on out there. It's a different. You come different back and it's a six-year-old's birthday party. Straight like, up. honestly, like, it was, like, it blew my mind. Yeah, but it's for, sure. the, for me, it's the fact that they're kind of living and breathing soccer. Yeah, like, yeah as, definitely. As much as we love Notting Hill Carnival. Uh, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of enough it's music genres. Black music, like, yeah, yeah, black it's music just, in it's general. It's everything. It's a different vibe. It's a great event. You know what I mean? It's a great gathering and, you know, I love it. I haven't, I haven't actually been to Trinidad during Carnival before. I've been in, like, the little warm-up period where they're having a lot of events, like, earlier this year I was there in January yeah but um and that was just like a different vibe altogether so you can imagine like you can tell me like actual carnival in Trinidad is crazy it's listen I'll show you some videos it's crazy, it's crazy, it's <laughs> crazy. some crazy videos and are you coming back in the summer here for like the festival yeah token? we're doing Boomtown Regalan Festival um, you've done Boomtown before yeah. if I'm not mistaken yeah, man, yeah, yeah my boys definitely. my boys saw you there I was jealous yeah <laughs> yeah now man we love coming to UK for the festival so summer is the best time to be here you know what I mean and we have so Summer Jam, Reggae Jam, um, Ratatam Festival over in Europe too. So we're doing the full rounds this summer. You've basically got a lot to look forward to. I'm even getting messages as well. People want <laughs> people want shout out. Big up Saskia with the locks as well. She's uh, saying, and our founder Jennifer is from Uganda as well. Uh, see so you big shout out to her nice. as well, listening in. I want to know, we're coming towards the end. We've got five minutes left. Yeah. We've spoken about so much. Once again, congratulations on the Grammy. We haven't spoken about it too much, but yeah. I just think... 
Yeah. You don't need the mainstream recognition yet. Yeah. It's nice. Let's, yeah, it's be, nice. let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. It you adds, prefer it to have it. It adds to everything. Yeah, it adds to everything. You know, the Grammy thing changed the whole perception of me and my artistry and the music. You know, even though I'm still the same person, but just the vibes and the energy around it has gotten more animated and bigger. So, yeah, definitely happy with the Grammy. I was elated, euphoric. You know what I mean? It was just a, it's a life-changing thing for sure. You know what I mean? And you can hold your head up high because I think just the way you carried yourself, the speech, yeah. you brought the team on stage as yeah, well and stuff thanks. like that. Just in, just in general, man. Just yeah. everything was very sweet about it. Yeah, and thanks. you deserve it, man, because you, you've, been, you've been grafting. You've been, like thanks. you said, making music makes you happy, but also you've been, you've been in this game. Yeah, man, we're putting all the work over the years. That was the, that was the main thing the whole time. And we felt like a lot of ups and downs, you know, a lot of times being overlooked and things. So it's, it's good to be right there in front and centre of the action you know that's what I love to hear my man just like Arsenal right now oh you want to take it there <laughs> oh you want to take it there okay so oh, I've got yeah, two questions yeah. straight away I was about to say a lot of stuff but <laughs> this, has out, this has gone out of the let's window let's do it let's do it are you an Arsenal fan definitely okay talk to me about a bit about what's going on are you excited do you still think you're the favourite I mean I was upset with a couple of decisions Arteta made in the Liverpool game yeah. I don't think that defender needed to come on. You know what I mean? But <laughs> we won't name him. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, Shaka kinda let me down with that with that goal there. But still, you know, I do feel like we're still in the driver's seat. I think I think we'll beat Chelsea. Yeah. I think, you know I'm a Chelsea fan. Hopefully we Just can draw with City, because City are on a different level of form right yeah. now. If we can draw with them and if we can beat Newcastle, I think we're good. That's the tough one. That's the tough James's one. Park, I think. Yeah. And Brighton's a bit of a tough yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but I think we'll get over that. Like the, the man them show me enough this year to show that we can, you know, really hold it all when we need to. Because even going to Anfield and not losing is a big thing for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I felt like we could have won that game and it would have been a turning point completely. It was, the thing is, because of the way the match went, it felt like a loss. But yeah, yeah, when exactly. you When you step back and you look at what happened, we yeah. went to Anfield and we got a draw. Exactly. This is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. I am, um, I don't want to admit this. Again, this is similar to me turning my back on West London. It's happening more regularly than I wanted to. But, yeah. I can't lie, London's a different city when yeah. Arsenal win the league. And <laughs> Arsenal haven't won the league in ages. There's shit. two there's too many of my friends who are Arsenal fans. And I don't want to say this. Yeah. But it would make me very happy to see them happy after so many straight decades up, of pain up. because you lot have been mad. So which side do you say? Chelsea. Oh, okay. I'm a Chelsea yeah, man. Okay. I can't lie. We, we're having we're having a very ugly season. But no, but I can pre I can appreciate you talking like that still and at least being happy for you. You know what I mean? Like I Chelsea see. fans in Jamaica are some of the most obnoxious people. <laughs> like, but can I ever have a conversation with a Chelsea fan, bro? Uh, Chelsea know? fans in London are obnoxious. <laughs> uh, Chelsea fans in general are obnoxious. But I I can't lie. Let me let me not even turn my back on my own. Football, yeah. football fans are obnoxious. Yeah, when they, yeah, yeah, when they want to sure. be obtuse, they can be obtuse. Do you know yeah. what it is? Mm. It's not like I want to see Arsenal win all the time. Of course. Have one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have your year. I want to see my friends happy. Yeah, yeah. The amount sure. of joy this team has brought the yeah. Arsenal fans this year and the surprise. It's amazing. It's, it's been amazing. crazy. And it's amazing to hear that you're an Arsenal fan, my man. Yeah. Anybody hating on us this year, something really wrong with you. You trust know what me, I mean? Trust me, there's darkness it's, inside. Yeah, there's darkness inside. There's deep dark, down. Deep down because. <laughs> The thing is, the average age is low. Yeah. They're all young kids, yeah, exactly. but you want them it's to kids. do well. Arteta is a nice story, everything, you know? One thing Arteta makes me laugh, yeah. Mm. So, the Arsenal manager, Mikel Arteta, just seems like his hair doesn't move. <laughs> like, he's just got, like, a block. <laughs> like, he's glued thing. on. And I don't know if I'm I'm a hypocrite here, because I've got a similar kind of thing going on. <laughs> but it just feels like anywhere he goes, the, yeah. the hair goes with him. I forgot to pay attention <laughs> to that, no. <laughs> and know? it doesn't... No, no, it will, ne- no, no, will never move. Never, not even in yeah. the... No, 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 nothing, nothing. Crazy. That thing is Teflon. It's a brick. <laughs> Honestly, big up him though. He's probably hiding a very big brain in there. Straight. No, oh, man, I think a good person, man. I, um, I just wanted to say, final notes. Um, yeah. It's amazing what you've achieved so far. Thank you. Congratulations once again on the award. Congratulations on the album. I'm not even going to talk about the award. Straight. Beautiful, timeless music. You've been doing that for a long time. Enough respect. And I hope that it will long continue. Yeah, man, and I'm going to try and catch you in the summer at one of these festivals. I've never Do seen it, you yeah. live. No, man, you need to. I've never like, seen you live. Yeah, now is the best time because I feel like, you know, like the last couple of years, my whole stage show just elevate to a different level. So, yeah, man, you're going to enjoy yourself. Oh, I know what you're
video about no I've seen videos I have internet I have internet I have internet don't yeah, worry we'll about me time, so. but I um, I honestly believe that even bigger things are coming for you for um, sure. again give thanks the catchphrase of this show is going to be give from thanks. now on be That's grateful it. give thanks and I just want to say thank you for coming down man yeah man no, because Listen, the journey to Holsden is long sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the journey is long, yeah, good, but man, anything for the beat. It's yeah, been man. amazing, and I'll tell you something: the door is always open if you want to come back, my man. So anytime you're in London, yeah, maybe sure. not after 29 live shows, <laughs> but you know, do your thing. That was Kabaka Pyramid. Thank you so much, my brother. Yeah, man, we have still got bro. one more hour left of the beat. London's drive time. You might hear a bit of music now in the next 15, 20 minutes because I want to take some photos with my brother. Maybe record a few drops. See if he's got time for all yeah, that man, business. Yeah, but thank you so much bro and we shall see you after the adverts in a bit